Hello guys, it is currently November 20th, and uh, quite a lot has happened since the last video update. So here we go. I'll start off with uh, my Utricularia sandersonii blue, which is actually flowered and is putting up a few more fluorescences. There's another one coming up there, but I mean, that's what the flowers look like. <coughs> kind of fringed edge, angry bunny look instead of the standard sandersonii look. Still pretty small. I'd say they're larger, but bladder warts are tiny in general. So there's the whole bladder wart setup. Then we have the Drosphorus spatulata, which has gone flower crazy. Go over the cherry image for this so we don't get a reflection. So there's the spatulata. And uh, Sarsenia and flytrap seedlings. I've actually got some germination on the spatter patterns by lamentation, so you can see two of them right there. Zoom in a bit. Yeah, so hopefully, some of those other seeds strike. Anyway, looks like we got one. Actually, yep, there goes number three. And uh, I have one of the Lamentations by Nigrophorphoria. It's a uh, decided wants to bury in the moss first. And I moved the Pinguicula launea indoors for the winter. Since they're still pretty small, don't want them to uh, go into dormancy, not have enough energy, and die off. And place the subspecies Trichocallus. Coming along nicely, a few more of the game have decided they want to turn into plants, so that's why there's a few more than last time. Then here we have some stuff from Scott. Drosphora Helodes gem or gemme. Yeah. Voice is acting weird today. Then uh this is definitely new from last time and very exciting. That right there. It's one of seven seedlings of Drosphorus cystiflora red. Very, very rare sundew. There's only two sites in the world for this in South Africa. So, yeah, super excited about these. I do plan on taking cuttings to hand over to some lucky people. Because, uh, Apparently it's rather common for them to die after flowering. But I'm going to be giving them very specific conditions. Then we have Dresser admirabilis, which just germinated. There's two of those. Where'd the other one go. Oh, there it is. Right in the middle of there. Then Drosser Madagascariensis. With a spatulata. That snuck in. Sounds a lot redder than my other one. And then, uh, Utricularia multifida has two flowers coming in. But, uh, it's an annual species. I think it's pretty much done. Forever. But that's just the way things work. Now we have the, um, Nepenthes terrarium. So there's Nepenthes glabrata uppers. It did make a really nice one, but a ladybug fell in it, and ladybugs are poisonous, so it died. There's a rather nice one. But the other one was gorgeous, so really unfortunate about that. And then uh, Caladium actually decided to, uh, I'm running into the lights here, to make a few pictures. So there's one of them. Let's see if I can rotate over so we can get the front side. Come on. Yeah, there we go. That one's Maxima by Campanulata. Very cool. And the other picture is kind of hiding. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. Right there, so you can't really see much of it. And, uh. Here we go. Singalana by Bashiana. Her Nepenthes Lorraine opened a picture. Very dark, very slender, 
then to go along with that we have the largest Nepenthes ventricosa picture that I've gotten so far. That's about five inches, or not five inches tall, uh, four maybe, something like that. Then Nepenthes Alba has actually made a few decent pictures. Zoom in on there, focus in on that. Yes, there's Nepenthes Alba. Which is very dark despite its name. And then Berkey is actually starting to mature a bit. I made a new picture over in the Sibionensis pot. It's a pretty decent shape. And then my helium for a miner actually made two new leaves for me since November or October 1st. It's about a month and a half later. And it's starting to take off. Very happy about that. Focus on the nectar spoon. Here we go. And then, uh, here's a biggie. Nepenthes lavicola has made a two, or slightly over two inch pitcher, which as you can see is much larger than the other two. Or not other two, what am I talking about? Other few. And the peristome. They're rather attractive on this one. Focus already. Sorry, my macro lens does not like angled glass. Yeah, there we go. Stripes galore. Very, very attractive plant. It's actually starting to slow down as it reaches a more mature size. Then there's a developing picture somewhere over there. Now there you can see it coming into focus. Here, there we are. Here's the next Lavicola picture. Hopefully it doesn't deform against the Glabrata pot. But, on top of that, got a rather large Aristolake Uides by Ventricosa picture. So it decides to come here. Much larger than last time. It's actually a time to color up so you can see how dark that peristome gets. I'm gonna put it back before I anger it. See what else is there. Oh yeah. Right over in this corner. Uh, there's the latest Naga seedling. So you can see how we readjust this light. work with me. You can see fairly dark picture. It's starting to become more open and then uh, for our last video update I said that Nepenthes Barbigio is refusing to picture. Guess what they convinced it to do? Should we follow the tendril? There's the plant. So, whatever I'm doing, it's liking. Might just have taken a while to settle in. But uh, hopefully it doesn't crush the Naga. That should be a pretty decent pitcher. Then we actually have, finally, a new developing tendril on the Dormouse. So I'm going straight for the Burbidia pot on a rather long tendril. And the uh, Glabrata has actually reached the very top of the terrarium. It's now starting to bend. So just because of how obnoxious it is, I'm probably going to cut the vine. Get a cutting probably about right there. So right above where the latest pitcher is formed. And right below that last one. 
Now we go over to the orchids. I forgot this. Oh, before we go over the orchids, here's the only Nepenthesibi unensis pitcher that remains so far. It opened a smaller one, but this is the largest and nicest one that's retained living form the longest. Fairly promising shape on that. Absolutely no ala. And it's only about a quarter inch tall, as you can see. Penthes caladium could swallow it, and that's not a very big hybrid. So, little guy's a long way to go, but it looks like on the back side of the terrarium it's going to be making a pitcher. But, uh, there's the Sagmorphus Priscilla. Right there, it's blinding bright yellow flowers. I um, accidentally broke off flower stem when uh, treating with insecticides in there because it had some mites or aphids, something of the sort. And then, okay, so over to the orchid window. Here we have the Memorium Barber Duncan working on a flower. So if you have any Paphiopetalum flowers that'll be opening and you want to create some hybrids, let me know. I'd be more than happy to set up a pollen exchange. Either you sending me pollen or me sending you pollen. And then uh, the Hydnophytum simplex, which is not an orchid, looks almost exactly the same as the last time you saw it. There we go. Polarization is better right there. Yeah. Still recovering from the aphid attack. Probably going to take it to Medivy soon to give it a little heat boost. Well, I'm going to anyways because the vacation I'm going on in December. So a lot of these warmer tolerant ones will be going there. And then here's something from uh, Terraform's member that I met up with in Northern Virginia for or to sell an Apenthes cutting for Meadowview that he really wanted. So um, in exchange for my efforts, gave me your Strepia striata, which is a very fast growing orchid with very cool little flowers. Look like a uh, lobster mitten, sort of. And uh, a little late for this, but here's the Sophronitis cernua. It's opened its three developing leaves, and that one flowered. However, after the first flower, I decided I wanted to kill off the other two. So, uh, see that one was sort of opening. It just dropped. But uh, that's just the way things go sometimes. Well, I'll have to wait another year. Then uh, Collagene Fimbriata is continuing to set out two roots. Waiting for my mount to be kiln fired to the bisque state. Since it is stoneware, I don't want to become too vitrified to the point where we won't accept water at all. And then the Fragmapedium Lindenii. Steadily growing. Where the new. Ah, there's the new relief. And uh, Dendrobium Osmum, same as last time. I actually found out what this um, begonia is that Mason gave me. It's called Begonia Immense. So uh, he's given me a monster because this thing can get huge. And the uh, Oncidium jonesianum, still yet to flower after two years of owning it. And it puts out a leaf a year. We just watered it earlier today. So uh, that one might be going into Meadowview soon to see if it likes those conditions better. Then, yeah, uh, camera strap caught on the chair. Uh, see if I can get a better angle on this so you can actually see it. There we go. There is Maxillaria huntii holding in there. And then something that I picked up from an orchid greenhouse in Leesburg called Encyclia polybulbon. I actually take this one off so you're not getting window glare. There's a few growth points. And a flower sheath coming in. So I'll be getting little orangey brown flowers soon, hopefully. Miniature orchid spreads quite a bit, but it's cool looking, so I bought it. Um, downstairs I have a little something from the same place that I got for free since I mentioned Meadowviews Greenhouse, which is a BC Hippodamia. 
that has five foot long roots. So I'm not going to be showing that because it's just so big. And I cannot fit it all in one frame. But it's a monster, so that'll be going over to Meadowview soon. It's a donation. Probably today. And yeah, that's about it. So until next time, hope you enjoyed this. I don't know how I could have forgotten this, but uh, if you remember correctly last time that Cephalotus picture was inflating, well, it's open since then, and that's what it looks like. Very colorful. I'm extremely happy with this plant. And it's obviously extremely happy with what I'm doing with it. Which, um, on top of the wick watering once a week, I also top water it with a spray bottle. And, uh, it seems to respond very positively to getting misted daily. Or not misted directly, but watered daily. So now I like to get water on the leaves and the upwicking. So, yeah. That's a cephalotus for you. It's growing a lot faster than I expected. Which, uh, not something to complain about exactly. Very attractive plant. Very bizarre looking, as my dad says. Uh, you can see where Audrey 2 from Little Shop of Horrors came from, because this one really does look like it could be sentient. I guess is one of the appeals of it. A little alien plant. So, there you go. That is everything, I believe. Until next time.